In the world of filmmaking, it's a very creative journey, but it's your creative journey. And on today's episode, I'm gonna talk with Liz Wright about her creative journey making Last Stop. Liz, thank you so much for joining me. Could you tell me about what the 48 hour film challenge is and how that developed into Last Stop? So Last Stop, um, where our topic or genre that we drew during the 48 hour challenge was a road trip musical. So we had to come up with a story that kind of based around that. So Last Stop is a road trip movie based on um, two bickering sisters and one of their daughters that are on the way to see their dad in hospice care. And um, it's kind of a sad, but it, like think of like Little Miss Sunshine versus like Thelma and Louise kind of vibe. Um, that's kind of, I, I would say the genre is really just like a family oriented movie on, um, you know, forgiveness, redemption, and ultimately it also fo focused a little bit around mental health, um, uh, just cause that was part of, um, Brian Higgins who ran the 48 hour challenge. Um, that was kind of, he said, focus on mental health. So we have a little bit of that in there as well. Interesting. So how did you assemble your cast and crew for this project? So my cast and crew all came off of Facebook groups. Um, I went into the Utah Film Group and a couple of others. I went into the 48 Hour Film Challenge. Um, actually, I think the first person I secured was our composer, um, funny enough, who is out of LA. His name was Steve Pratt, and he's an award-winning um, composer out of LA. And he had posted in our Salt Lake group on the 48 Hour page, like, hey, I'm looking to join a team this year. If anybody wants to work together, let me know. And so that was the first person that I secured. And then I posted um, in the Utah film group and a couple of the other Facebook groups and all of my team came from there. I really didn't tell anybody no, anybody that said, yes, I'm interested. I said, cool, what are you interested in doing? What are your talents? What are your strengths? What kind of equipment do you have? And so I got a few different team members that had different camera options. Um, so we ended up with the black magic camera on our team because one of the guys, uh, the guy that was super into horror movies, um, had one in his back pocket. And so, um, we had awesome equipment, uh, sounds, uh, sound we had, he had a boom mic, but that was kind of an issue. And we can talk about that a little bit later, but, um, and then just, you know, you can't really plan or cast a movie that you haven't written yet. And so it was just finding people that were passionate and people that were committed and whoever showed up got to be part of it. Could you take a minute and share what was the most fun part about making this film? Mm, the funnest part was just doing it. Like we had a blast on set. Um, I mean, even like during the stressful time, we had actually a huge hailstorm that came in right in the middle of filming. And we were at my house that I was living at up in Huntsville. So everybody just kind of huddled together and, you know, they were singing songs and we had one guy that was in musical theater. So he was just kind of the entertainment of the group while we were working out the kinks. And um, it was just really super fun to get to know almost complete strangers, like because none of us had met before the 48 hour, except for one one team member that I had been a um, uh, first AD on her short film that um, I had reached out to her as well because I knew she was an amazing writer. And so that was the only person I knew. And she actually got sick during the challenge and was only able to make it for the kickoff event and kind of the initial stages. But, um, you know, she just, we just had some amazing fun people on set. And so the funnest part just being in it and doing it and not letting whatever challenges that were happening around us like stop us from doing it. So I remember um, there's a scene in the car because we're a road trip. So a lot of it takes place in a, a truck and an RV. And so um, there was a scene that between me and the other girl who played my sister where I really wanted to capture her emotion because the line that we had to use as part of the 48 hour challenge was we're not friends and we never will be. And um, I was, I wrote that line for her to use um, in regards to our estranged brother that we uh, had no idea where he was. And I really wanted to capture that emotion. So we had our DP like literally sitting on her lap with the camera in front of her face, like not safe driving conditions by any means, um, but 
we really were able to get that like captured that emotion captured on our face up close so that was pretty it was i mean we were laughing the whole time in this like super emotional scene but um that was probably one of my like favorite memories is having having our dp basically sitting on her lap in the front seat of the truck that's awesome now making any kind of movie is going to have a lot of challenges uh, what were some of the most interesting challenges you had to overcome to make last stop for me I had too many cooks in the kitchen, if that makes sense. I had people that had been um, directors and had been writers. And so, and I, and I wanted to have that on my team so that I had that additional experience that I didn't have, because this was my first film. Like I've been on other films, I've been as a background and stuff like that, but this was my like first project. And so it was challenging because I felt like that role, even though I had delegated somebody to a specific role, it just kept kind of like shifting a little bit. And um, especially when we got to the point, like during the hailstorm, where it was like they're fighting over what needs to be done, what needs to be shot. And I'm like, everybody's just going to go shoot. So we ended up splitting. And so I assigned at that moment a first AD. Um, and I said, you're going to go shoot this scene in the, tr in the um, RV while we take the truck during the hailstorm and we shoot the other stuff. And if we can figure out editing later so it looks like it's still combined, great. If not, it's a flaw in the movie, but let's just get this done. Um, and so I think the hardest part for me personally was just delegating and feeling like in my power and not letting other people like take over. Um, and just kind of keeping the tempers like even keel with a bunch of guys that have are used to making their own movies. But you got the movie done and that's amazing. So tell me, how did it feel to premiere that short film in front of an audience inside a theater? It was amazing. Like none of, and, and that was the awesome part was like being able to have my team there because even though they had done, and most of us were student filmmakers, like um, Brandon, who was the kind of big horror movie guy, I'd worked on a couple of his sets, but none of his stuff had been finished or screened yet. And, you know, I've done stuff as a background actor, which even if it is screened, it's like, what, what, was that me? Like, you can't even tell if you were, um, you know, if you were on screen or not a lot of times. And so just being able to sit there and, and see it on the big screen was like the equivalent to me of giving birth to a baby probably because um, I don't have any kids of my own. The only thing I've done artistically where I've been able to see my work out in the world or my creation out, out in the world was, uh, when I published my first book and it was that same type of feeling of like, you know, ripping open the box and unveiling it. And you, you literally just like tears come to your eyes when you're just like, wow, we did it. And then the fact that we were able to move on, like not only did we get it completed, but, um, we made it to the best of screening. So we actually were able to win an award for it. So I was super proud of myself and proud of my team for just kind of just, nailing down and getting it done. I like how you mentioned that making a movie is a lot like making a baby. Uh, my wife, uh, after we had her first child said, I don't ever wanna have any more kids and we proceeded to have two more. So now that you have finished Last Stop, uh, what is the plan moving forward? Do you have more films or what, what is that plan? Actually growing this baby into an adult. So I'm in the process of um, developing and in the pre-production of this turning into a feature movie. Um, I also looked at the 48 hour film challenge as like a opportunity because there, funny enough, there was another challenge going on in San Diego, like two weeks after the Salt Lake Festival. And I was like, who wants to go to San Diego and do it again? <laughs> Everyone thought I was nuts, but I was like, the, the cool thing that I learned about the 48 hour is that, um, and if you go under the rules and um, rules of the challenge on the, on the main page, that as a filmmaker, I could have gone into the, into, if I had gone into the San Diego challenge, I owned the rights to what I had already filmed during the Salt Lake challenge. And so as long as nothing was pre-written and I followed, you know, I pulled out the genre in San Diego and used the elements that I had to use in San Diego, um, I could use like 40% or something of what I had already shot in one of my other 48 hour projects. And so that made it seem like super enticing because that's only 60% that now you have to do in that 48 hour versus a whole 40, as long as you can kind of use what you already have in your back pocket and integrate that into whatever storyline you had in the 48 hour. I was like, that's kind of a cool thing. 
And I also thought like, what an awesome way to get a film portfolio uh, portfolio for somebody that has never done any films before. Um, you know, pop in, even if you've got to, you know, be the producer of it and put down the fee and then whatever fees, you know, people, it's donation based. So people did chip in for um, meals and um, I think that's pretty much the only thing people chipped in for. But um, because everybody on, you know, we own the equipment, I own the location, so we didn't really have to pay to rent anything. But taking on that role as a producer really kind of gets you the idea of like how much work really does go into a film. And it does mean long hours. It does mean sleepless nights. It does mean extreme situations happening that you're not going to be prepared for that. You got to kind of pivot and turn over. Um, so yeah, people thought I was crazy, but I was like, let's do it again. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it just, it just actually ignited the fire under me more that I'm like, I can do this. And now I can officially call myself a filmmaker. I'm not a wannabe filmmaker. Like I made a film that got screened not once, but twice already. And I'm actually going to be screening it again, um, up in Huntsville, uh, later this month up in, uh, up at the library. They've graciously uh, donated their space to be able to open it so that residents of their town can kind of see a local movie shot there. So, yeah, I'm like, OK, what's next? Like, <laughs> bring it on. That's so cool that you're able to premiere it so many times. Now, a lot of the people who watch this are curious what else they can do with their film from the 48 hour film challenge or other film competitions or were they made on their own. When you're choosing a film festival to submit last stop to, what's important to you? Looking for festivals that kind of focus on beginning filmmakers as opposed to like trying to compete with the, the big wigs. Um, I also look for like women based film festivals to kind of celebrate myself as a woman filmmaker. Um, so I'm looking at the LA Film Fest and the uh, Women's Film Fest later this year. And then um, I also kind of research that it's easier to get into a festival that's kind of lesser known and you can get just as much valuable uh, value being played in that festival. And there's not as much competition. Um, I actually did submit this one into the uh, Cannes mini short, which was in March and Nice, France. And I just got it by the wire, by the deadline. And unfortunately it didn't get accepted for the festival but um, it was still a good process of like, you know, putting it out there. And then I spoke to a producer out of LA that was just like, a lot of times, especially if you're getting it in at the last minute, they don't even look at those films. So she was like, don't, don't even think those bigger festivals, which I thought I was doing a small one because this isn't the actual Cannes Film Festival. This was just a mini one that they do in Nice, France. Um, but she just said, don't even take that personally. She said, on, she said, honestly, they probably never even watched your film. And it was, a re and it was rejected because they just didn't have the time. And it was so close to the deadline. She was like, they probably didn't even watch your film. And so I think, I think a lot of people, you know, they want to be shown at Sundance Film Festival. They want to be shown at the, you know, Toronto Film Festival. And, you know, there is a chance that that can happen. Um, but, also be okay with like being in the smaller towns and sometimes the smaller towns have big people, bigger fish in it that you realize are there. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now in wrapping everything up, what advice would you give to a filmmaker that says, you know what? I think I'd be interested in filmmaking. Get on the set as soon as you can, whether that be a student set or you're a background actor. I really learned a lot. My first, film that I was in was a, I don't even think it ever even got picked up or anything, but it was a Christmas movie shot down in Salt Lake. And, um, this was right actually it was 2021. So it was at the end kind of, I was still during the pandemic. Um, but not at the height where everything was like covered. And so I learned a lot just by being on that set and watching a full Hollywood production be made. Um, and I kept coming back on set. I think I was an extra on that set for like five or six days straight. They just kept saying, do you want to come back tomorrow? Until they couldn't use me anymore because I'd been in so many different scenes. And they're like, yeah, we'll use you. <laughs> um, so get on a set and pick up a camera. Like if you have a story that, you know, you're inspired to tell, like don't worry about, like even if it's like 
your dog or a doll, like your kid's doll or something, pick up a camera and make a movie. I think, I think kind of that's my, where my inspiration came from because my grandma actually used to do that with us. And, you know, she'd pick a cool location, like a little cabin that was out on my uncle's ranch or something. And I remember she was like, Oh, look, we're going to do a little red riding hood, which was like something that we were familiar with that story. And she'd make the costumes and then she'd shoot it. And, um, on her old, like, VHS camcorder. And so I think that's the best way to be like, if you want to do film, go start doing film, go get on a set or go create your own set. Or, you know, um, I think that Salt Lake Community College here in Utah has an amazing film program and it's not as expensive as like UCLA or even University of Utah. That was kind of my direction that I took. I came from California wanting to go to UCLA. I didn't have the grades to get in. So I took I took classes initially at, at Salt Lake Community College, and then I transferred up to the University of Utah. And um, my plan was to go into getting my master's there, which still hasn't happened. But I feel like the 48 hour really gave me my master's in film. So just get out there and start working. Liz, thank you so much for sharing your story with me. I, I really hope that people who are watching this right now are feeling inspired and not letting anything stop them from telling their story, whether you're using your phone or using a black magic camera like Liz had over there. Uh, I don't want you guys to say that the equipment is the thing that's slowing you down. You don't need a big pile of money either. What you need is what's in here. It's that creative spark that you have, that story you need to tell that's uniquely you. And when you have that story ready and you're ready to shoot it and you have it all in the can and you're ready to start putting out the festivals, please reach out to me and let's go ahead and talk about your journey so that we can help inspire the next filmmaker. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.